Okay, so hi there. Um, in this video, we're going to continue our discussion in science, technology, and society. And specifically, we're going to talk about the antecedents in the Middle Ages. Okay, so we're now in, here in the Middle Ages. We're done with the ancient times. And let's start. The Middle Ages, uh, anyways, is roughly around, we have three um, periods for that. The early Middle Ages, the, shall we say, the Middle Middle uh, Middle Ages, Middle Ages, and then the the late Middle Ages. So it is roughly around from the fifth century until the fifteenth century. So like uh, it it ranges upon uh, ten centuries. Okay, so this is where the major advances in scientific and te technological development took place. Okay, and one of uh, we're just going to tackle about um, very briefly about um, five of them, but um, not to limit yourselves in more than. Um, what is discussed here okay so there there's more than what is being discussed here so we're just going to choose um, five or six and one of these antecedents in the middle ages is the heavy plow so the heavy plow um, from the words of professor thomas barnabek anderson who is a professor in the university of southern denmark who is one of those who um researched about this heavy plow history in the in Europe. So he said that heavy plow turned European agriculture and economy on its head. Suddenly the fields with heavy, fatty, and moist clay soils became those that gave the greatest yields. Okay, so this is um, what is the whole heavy plowing. And we have this summer source. Um, the invention of this heavy plow made it actually, actually possible to harness areas with clay soil. And clay soil was more e was even more fertile than the lighter soil. Okay, this led to prosperity, and literally created a breeding ground for economic growth in cities. Okay, especially in in the um, northern part of Europe. Okay, so that's one of them. That's the heavy plow. Second in our antecedents is of course the gunpowder. Okay, so this originated actually in China. So it is called there as huoya. Uh, sorry, Huo Yao, rather, so which means flaming medicine. So the birth of this gunpowder was quite accidental. It was first invented by alchemists while attempting to make what they call the elixir of immortality. Okay, it is a mixture of sulfur, saltpeter, and charcoal. So please don't mix this on your own at home. So of course, with the gun, with the gunpowder, um, you saw those. As fireworks, also do, those are also one of one of the effects of gunpowder, and also um, it's also used in artil artillery, and we know that it's really essential now in modern day weapons. Okay. Um, furthermore, let's talk about a little bit of it of its history. At the end of the Tang Dynasty, gunpowder was being used in military affairs, like what I told you, and during the Song and Yuan dynasties, frequent frequent wars spurred. The development of cannons, fire arrows, fire arrows shot from bamboo tubes. Okay, and this is one of those cannons when it reached Europe. Okay, so eventually it, it, it reached Europe, of course. Next up in our antecedents is paper money. Paper money also was originated, also originated in China, especially in the Song Dynasty, which was um, uh, mentioned a while ago. In the 11th century CE, nearly 20 centuries after the earliest known of metal coins, okay, paper money was certainly easier to carry in large amounts, and we know that by now in our banknotes, okay, or our bills, okay, specifically. So, paper money during the Tang Dynasty, which is around 618 to 907 CE, um, merchants began to leave those heavy coins with some agents of them, who would record how much money the merchant had on the deposit on a piece of paper so the paper um, you may think of it now as a promissory note could be traded for goods and the seller could go to agent to that agent rather to redeem the note for the coins so with the trade renewed along with the silk road with here this um, gave us simplified cartage okay and this privately produced promissory notes okay the paper Okay, we're still not true paper currency, however, during those times. So at the beginning of the Song Dynasty, around 960 to 1279 CE, the government licensed specific deposit shops where the people could leave their coins and receive the notes, okay, those papers, pieces of papers. And, and in 1100s, 
the Song authorities of the Song dynasty decided to take direct control of the system, issuing the world's first proper government-produced paper money. This money is called Jiaozi. And this is what you're looking at now. Okay, so this is Jiaozi, taken from this source. Okay, um, this invention is one of the wonders that Marco Polo himself brought back to Europe in his travel journal in the late 13th century. So, and then history was made. The first bank or bills was made by a Swiss, okay, by a Swiss bank. And then that's what we're using right now, okay, in modern times. Okay, next up is antecedent in the Middle Ages is the mechanical clock. Uh, during most of the Middle Ages, roughly around 500 to 1500 AD, technological advancement was at the virtual standstill in Europe. So sundial styles evolved okay, as a means of telling time. They didn't move far from ancient Egyptian principles. So this is one um, illustration of what a mechanical clock looks like. Okay, And in the early to mid-14th century, large mechanical clocks began to appear in the towers of several Italian cities. There's no record of any working models preceding these clocks uh, that were rate-driven and were re regulated by virgin fol foliot escapements. Um, these escapements that I said reigned for more than 300 years with variations in the shape of the foliot. But take note that this, um, these mechanisms are not that accurate. Okay, So there's a, a lot of time being um, delayed Okay, I mean in, in, in a sense of, of this mechanism is being worked on. So that's why um, we need to improve this. Okay, people, scientists need to improve this. Specifically, Christian Huygens is one of them, a Dutch scientist, made the first pendulum clock in 1656. It was regulated by a mechanism with a natural period of oscillations. Although Galileo Galilei is sometimes credited with this invention of the pendulum, he studied its motion as early as 1582. And his design for a clock was not built before his death. Okay, Huygens' pendulum clock had an error of less than one minute a day. It was the first time of such accuracy had been achieved. And later his, in his refinements, um, the errors of the clocks now was reduced in less than 10 seconds a day, which is a very, a very, a very um, great okay, um, accuracy during those times. But of course, um, 10 seconds a day will... will will be accumulated and that will be a big time okay if you if we lost that per day so now i think um, most of the clocks and i believe most of the clocks that we are we have now are accurate as possible okay provided the batteries are new <laughs> okay and lastly in our um antecedents in the middle ages is the spinning wheel so the spinning wheel is an ancient invention used to transform various plant and animal fibers into thread or yarn or cloth shall we say um, no one knows for certain where, when the first spinning wheel was invented. Historians have come up with several theories, in which I will present in the second page after this. So this is spinning wheel. Okay, I think you are familiar with this, with the cartoons, the fairy tales, Sleeping Beauty, in which they use this, this as a, as an icon there, and which uh, of course Sleeping Beauty is, is famous from Disney, but it was from a Butters Grimm, um, tale. So in ancient history of the spinning wheel, this is um, a book by the German author and science historian Franz Maria Feldhaus, traces the origins of the spinning wheel back to the ancient Egypt. However, there are some historians that suggest that it debuted debuted in China or in India rather between 500 and 1000 AD. While other evidence cites China as the point of origin. Again, here goes China. But for those who accept China where as a point of origin rather the belief is that the technology migrated from china okay going to iran and then from iran going to india and then finally from india to europe that is during the late medieval ages and the early renaissance okay so that's the end of the antecedents of the middle ages of the spinning wheel and let's wrap it up right now so what are the antecedents in the middle ages that we've talked about first off is the heavy plow okay which originated in the northern northern europe and then southern europe and then which which um, made the land um easier to grow plants with we have the gunpowder which originated in china paper money also from china um the mechanical clock which was um uh, rev revised or refined by christian huygens 
And lastly, we have the spinning wheel, which has a lot of theory where it came from. But if we're going to believe the the one that reached until Europe, that's that's again came from China, going to Iran, going to India, and then to the Europe as, as we speak. Okay, and that's the end of this video about the antecedents in the Middle Ages. Okay, hope you learned something from here. And this is the third video actually for the Science, Technology, and Society um, playlist of mine. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe this vid to my channel and like this video. Um, I'll be making more of this. Okay, so um, please subscribe so that you'll be updated with the latest content. Okay, so thank you so much for watching and see you soon. Bye!